All right, welcome to day four, everybody. Why don't we begin by quickly going over the homework from day three? So you may remember I asked you to extract one of these navigation links into its own dedicated component. So let's do that now together. So in my components directory, and actually a quick note, uh, I made it capital here. It's kind of muscle memory from other frameworks I also use, uh, but it can absolutely be lowercase if you prefer. All right, anyways, uh, navlink.blade.php. All right, let's grab this and paste it in like so. Switch back, and now this can become xnav link, like so. All right, obviously a little more work to do, but let's have a look in the browser. All right, come back, give it a refresh, and yeah, we do see the home link. But it's not very functional, right? This needs to be dynamic so that it can be used for any nav link item. All right, so why don't we do that slot technique here? Let's come back to layouts, and now this can become home. This one can become about, and this one can become contact. All right, come back, give it a refresh. All right, that looks good, but now, of course, you'll notice they're all linking to the exact same place. All right, so this is where the homework got a little bit tricky. You may not know about this. So it sounds like I need to pass in a an href, like we did, uh, like we do with a normal link, right? That would make sense. However, in the nav link component, how do we access it, right? Uh, well, as it turns out, all Laravel Blade components have access to an attributes object. And that object will contain uh, all the details for any attributes you pass. And by attributes, I mean href, I mean ID, I mean class, any of these. Okay, so if I come back to our component, yeah, what we could do initially is just open up an echo, um, PHP echo, and then say attributes. And that will properly be stringified. Now, yeah, again, keep in mind, attributes is an object. So there's actually more bells and whistles than what you initially see here. For example, if you want to merge in some sensible defaults, you could do so like this. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So let's keep it very simple right now. All right, back to the browser. Give it a refresh. And now we should see the about page and the contact page. And yeah, just to be crystal clear here, what if I wanted to say uh, the about page should have a style tag where the color is green or something like that? Well, that too will be included in that attributes object. So if I come back and give it a refresh, sure enough, it's green. Okay, so now you're probably thinking, okay, fine, but why would we ever do this? Uh, and the answer is, well, maybe for simple things you wouldn't. However, in real life, a nav link it's a little bit more complicated than a simple anchor tag. Uh, think about it. You will need specific classes or styling based on whether it is the currently active page or not. Um, there might be other situations where the presentation should differ based upon, I don't know, where you are in the website or what your screen size is. Anyways, the whole point is it gets a little bit more complicated than a basic anchor tag in most cases. So if we extract all of this into its own navlink component, we can isolate any of that complexity into a single file, which is really cool. All right, but yeah, that was just an example. I'm gonna delete it. And now I wanna make things look a little bit more attractive. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch over to tailwindcss.com. And actually on that note, before we begin, um, if you don't know what Tailwind CSS is, trust me, it's entirely fine. You don't need to. It's not a prerequisite for the course. It's just a way to quickly and rapidly build up um, some layouts and such without having to refer to a CSS file. So Tailwind is a CSS utility framework. And what utility means is you can declare classes that refer to specific uh, CSS properties effectively. So for example, there might be a class name of text red 500. And that literally refers to set the color to this shade of red. There might be another class name of MR-2, and that translates to set the margin right to level two. Uh, so again, it's very easy to learn, but it's not a prerequisite. All right, back to work. Now, one thing that I especially like about Tailwind is its companion, tailwindui.com. So this is a paid tool, but they offer free uh, example components, and those free ones are the only ones that we will use uh, for this series. 
Okay, anyways, check this out. If I browse components and we scroll down to application UI, yeah, notice they have examples of sidebars and multi-column layouts and headings. It ends up being a really great way to quickly scaffold uh, any new application that you're working on. Okay, so anyways, I'm gonna click on stacked layouts. And yeah, right here, you'll see usually the first one is free to anyone, but if you want any of these custom ones, uh, you have to pay for it. And again, we don't need the paid plan here. So if you're working along, we're just gonna grab the free code here and I can click on it. And that will give us what you see right here, a quick application uh, layout or UI. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this and within layout, yeah, we're gonna replace all of this and it's a big chunk of HTML, so that's okay. We'll go over uh, anything that's important and we'll probably delete a bunch of this as well. All right, so let's go back to the browser, give it a refresh, and mm, what's going on here? Well, we've pulled in uh, this Tailwind component and notice all of these utility classes, but we haven't actually pulled in the Tailwind CSS uh, framework. So you can attach this to your build tool of choice if you know what that is. But otherwise, while we're still in the in the playing phase, the toying phase, I'm just gonna reference it on a CDN. And I can do that, I believe I have a shortcut for that. Yeah, I can do that by creating a script and setting the source to cdn.tailwindcss.com. And that should do the trick. So if I come back and give it a refresh, ta-da, it works. Pretty cool. All right, so now I want to take two minutes and just quickly delete anything uh, that we're not going to use, like these menu bars and such. All right, so your profile, I'm going to search for that. And yes, yeah, notice uh, for anything that requires a bit of interactivity in JavaScript, they will include notes for what classes you should uh, toggle. In our case, though, it's not going to be relevant because we won't have any drop down menu. All right, so what you see here is the user's profile. All right, give that a refresh and now it's gone. But notice there will be mobile styling as well. So we should get rid of that uh, as well. All right, here's the mobile version. Come back, give it a refresh and now that's gone, good. All right, what else? Uh, we don't have five links, we only have um, three. So we have one for home, one for about, and one for contact, and then I will update these links. Cool. And there should be, let's see, yeah, this is the mobile specific version. So if I come back and refresh, we've updated it here, but notice for desktop view, uh, we haven't. So I'm gonna look for dashboard one more time. Aha, here we go. Let's update these as well. Home, about, contact. All right. Come back, give it a refresh. That looks good to me. Next, we have our heading here. So it's set to default. And if I scroll down here, uh, there we are. And then notice it says your content here. So example content goes here. Or the slotted content, right? And we learned about that in the last episode. There you go. So this would be the main content area uh, for each individual page. So let's see, can we just swap that out with slot? All right, let's give it a shot. So we come back, give it a refresh. And now notice a, a quick note, it's going to appear as if we're on the home page because those CSS styles are hard coded on that home link, but we will make that dynamic shortly. Uh, anyways, right now we're clearly on the contact page as you can see here and then we're on the about page, and then we're on the home page. Okay, but what about the heading here? And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We've learned about setting a default slot here, but now we've learned there's a section outside of that that also needs to be dynamic based upon the current page. Uh, and there's a couple ways we can do this. But one way that I like to is to simply assume this is a variable. Do you want it to be heading, title, anything you want? Let's call it heading. Okay, but now if I come back and give it a refresh, it's gonna blow up because, well, now it's looking for a heading variable that has not been defined. So that's proper behavior. Okay, so how do we define that? Well, if I come back to the home page, um, there's, there's two options here. We could pass it through as a prop, and a prop is just kind of a, a custom attribute like this, heading, or we can declare a named slot. So think of your slots as different areas where you paste content, and you could have a slot here, or a slot there, and a slot down here, right? But 
you need a way to distinguish between them. So we assign names. This is your your dashboard slot. This is your main slot. This is your footer slot, right? So if we know that this represents our default slot at the very top, let's create a new one for our heading slot. And we do that by writing x dash slot colon, and then in this case, the name of the slot or the variable. So we have heading here, and I can say home page. All right, come back, give it a refresh, and it works. Very cool. So yeah, this is one way that we can solve that problem. And I think it's probably going to be the path of least resistance. Um, like I said, we could talk more about props, but I don't want to get too into the weeds when it comes to components, because we have many other things to talk about first. All right, so let's go to the about page and update this one as well. Like so, contact. And again, this can be anything uh, you want. We're just using a, a basic uh, string for now. So home, about, contact. I think we're in business. All right, so now the last little fun thing I want to do is swap out some of these images. Uh, instead of the Tailwind UI logo, why don't we use, of course, the Laracast logo? And I will paste that in right here. Yeah, Laracast.com, images, logo, logo triangle, or use your own logo. Come back, give it a refresh. That looks nice. And then finally, this guy, this uh, Tailwind UI guy I'm always seeing. Uh, let's come down. Where are you, buddy? Right here. Let's swap that out with our mascot, Larry the Robot. So I will paste that in. And once again, Laracast.com slash images slash Larry AI face. And nope, there's two versions of this dude. Where's the other one? Here we go. Here's the other one. Like that. So come back, give it a refresh. And I like it. Okay, and then finally, I think this dude's name is Tom Cook. Why don't we change his name to Larry Robot? And we'll do just me, Jeffrey at Laracast.com. All right, give it a refresh, come down, and now we see Larry Robot. All of this is looking good, especially when considering we spent maybe 10 minutes or so on this. Okay, so now in the next episode, I'm on the contact page, but the home button is highlighted, which clearly is not correct. So we'll have to figure out how to conditionally uh, create layout or apply styling based upon what the current URL is or what the current route is. So yeah, I'll show you how to do that in day five. No homework today. I think you've done enough. Uh, and I'll see you later. Bye.